Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we're talking about iOS 11 Beta 5, which Apple released to developers earlier today at the time of recording this video. Now, if you happen to be a public beta tester, you'll probably be seeing iOS 11 Public Beta 4 within the next couple of days if it's not released later today. So stay tuned for that, but there's a lot that changed, so let's go ahead and talk about what's new. First up on the home screen, we have two additional icon changes. Now, back in iOS 11 Beta 4, Apple tweaked so many of the icons on the home screen. I was actually impressed with the amount of work that they did. In in this version of iOS 11, camera looks a little bit different. You can see that some lines have been removed, and the overall icon looks a lot simpler than it did in previous versions of iOS 11, and the settings app icon got a little bit darker as well. Now, this is my favorite icon on the home screen, and it looks like Apple increased the contrast, so seeing the difference between the foreground and the background is easier on your eyes. The gears are more well-defined, and the darker background helps you recognize the cogs easier. Next up in Control Center, there's a new pulsating-like radar icon in the top right-hand corner of the music toggle and when you tap on that it's automatically going to redirect you to the source selection page or the airplay toggle before you would have to 3d touch on the widget and then tap on the airplay icon but now by tapping that you can go immediately to your sources and for example right now since i'm at home it says i can either play my music on my iphone or my apple tv but it will also show your bluetooth headphones or regular plugged in headphones here as well in previous versions of ios 11 if you 3d touch it on an icon with no 3d touch menu like low power mode or do not disturb your device would just vibrate three times and nothing would happen. But in iOS 11 Beta 5, when you 3D touch on something like low power mode or do not disturb that doesn't have a menu, when you release it will still activate the toggle instead of doing nothing like it did before. After updating to iOS 11 Beta 5 on an iPad, you'll be greeted with these two new launch screens. So it says you can access the dock from anywhere and also switch between recent apps. This will be really handy for everybody that didn't know these features existed or how the new dock in iOS 11 worked. Next up in iOS 11 Beta 5, when you open up the health app for the first time after updating, you'll get a new pop-up from Apple asking you to share your health data with them. Now they say this is to improve health and activity data in the future. You can either allow, learn more, or not allow if you don't want to share any of your data with Apple. Moving on to the settings app, there's a new animation under emergency SOS's preference panel that's going to illustrate how you enable the emergency SOS feature, which is by pressing the power or lock button five times in a row in quick succession. Messages in iCloud, which was a big feature coming in iOS 11, has been removed from the beta at this point, and Apple didn't give us an exact date, but they say it's going to be re-added at some point in the future, but they didn't make it clear if that would be in iOS 11 or maybe a future update like iOS 11. 11.1. This feature allowed you to sync all of your messages through iCloud, so whether you were on your Mac or your iPhone or your iPad, all of your messages would be perfectly synced up. I constantly have issues with my Mac being out of date if I've got it connected to my iPhone's messages or my iPhone not having things that I've sent on my iPad, and it was a really great feature that I hope would ship with iOS 11. So hopefully Apple adds that back very soon in the future, but right now it has been removed. In the camera preference panel, if you have the grid option enabled from there, and then you head over to the camera app and try to take an overhead head shot like what I'm doing right now on screen, you get this new crosshair in the middle of the screen. Now, some people have reported that this was issued or added in a previous iOS 11 beta, but this is the first time that I've ever seen or heard of it. It's pretty cool because if you're trying to get that perfect top-down shot, the crosshair is going to tell you whether you're perfectly centered or perfectly level, or if you are a little bit tilted, which is pretty cool for anybody that really likes iPhone photography. And for iPhone 7 Plus users in the camera app in iOS 11 beta 5, you're going to get this new launch screen for the portrait camera feature that was added back in iOS 10.1 in 2016. There's nothing exciting here, no animations, no icons, just some text briefly explaining how the feature works. Next to the new camera and settings icons in this update, I think the next biggest change is that there's a new FaceTime dialing tone sound that sounds like this. pretty much the exact opposite of the old FaceTime sound. That one was very high pitched, very annoying, and it honestly hurt my ears every time I had to listen to it because it was way out of a normal vocal or audio range. But this new one is very bassy and I like it a lot better than before. Let me know what you guys think about the new sound by leaving a comment down below in the comment section. Inside of the music app, artists that have not been supplied an icon through Apple Music or through the iTunes store have gotten a refreshed microphone glyph. It used to be a colorful version in iOS 11 beta 4 
before and before, and now it has transitioned to a gray variant. One feature that we've continually talked about throughout the beta cycle is Smart Invert. It's that semi-dark mode feature that could be a dark mode, but that's also still really glitchy at this point. And I have to say in iOS 11 beta 5, it is improving. When you enable it like this, you get a new gray animation. And when you go to the home screen, the dock is no longer inverted. But I'm also getting this weird issue where some icons on the home screen are inverted. It's like one step forward, two steps back, but then another half step forward. I don't really know how to describe it because some things are working better and some apps still just look really bad and icons glitch out. So it's still clearly a work in progress. I feel like it's not going to be ready for launch in September. Maybe it would launch as a beta feature still just because it feels very half-baked, but there is a lot of time for Apple to change things. There's around a month and a half before we'll probably be seeing the full launch of iOS 11, so there is a lot of time for things to change, but Smart Invert is working better in some areas, but also working worse in others. One last change that I discovered in this update is that swiping down to enable the cover sheet or notification center has a slightly tweaked animation and it seems a lot more responsive than before. But what doesn't feel more responsive overall and it's kind of a cause for concern for me is iOS 11 beta 5 in general. I was hoping that at this point iOS 11 would start to get a little bit faster, usually around iOS 11 beta 4, 5, and 6 is when the speed changes start to become apparent. But I'm using an iPhone 7 and it's still pretty slow. Now it's not ridiculously slow as you've seen throughout the video, it's relatively responsive, but I'd say it's pretty much identical to iOS 11 beta 4, which is disappointing for me because every time I use an iPhone on iOS 10.3.3, it blows my mind away. My brain cannot take how much faster that software is than what we're dealing with right now. So the speed changes are not included in iOS 11 yet. And I really hope Apple's engineering team takes the time to correct these issues because if anybody installs iOS 11, you will immediately notice how much slower just opening apps and navigating around the entire operating system really is. And as far as battery life goes, I've got a quick public service announcement. Do not trust anyone that is putting out battery life report videos day of or day after when a new iOS 11 beta comes out. There is no way that you can judge a firmware's battery life two hours after it came out because you've only been using it for two hours and your usage is going to be different than normal day-to-day -day usage when you're not updating to a beta or looking for new changes. So keep that in mind. Right now, you can't tell. Overall, battery life in iOS 11 is not bad. It's worse than iOS 10, and I'll leave it at that. I made a full video on whether or not you should be installing iOS 11 on your daily driver, and I'll link that up here in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Anyway, guys, if more changes are discovered, I'll be sure to link them in the blog post down below in the description. And of course, if you want to download the iOS 11 wallpaper, I will leave that link located down there as well. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more videos on iOS 11 in the future. I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great, and I'll talk to you later.